Okay, let's work chapter 6, problem 26. We have the following situation. We have a traffic light that is being held up by the cables shown. And we are to find the tension on each cable. We are given that the weight of the light is 200 newtons. Uh, tension 3 is quite simple because tension 3 has to be equal to the weight of the traffic light. That's because tension 3 has to counter the weight. So if this is a traffic light, I would have tension 3 up and the weight down. Since the light is not falling or levitating, um, tension 3 has to be equal to the weight. So then tension 3 will be equal to the weight, which is 200 newtons. Uh, if I set up my coordinate system such that my y-axis is positive in this direction and my x-axis is positive in this direction, then I could make this a vector and specify the direction. For the other two tensions, we have to do some geometry first. We would first note the y-components of tension 1. So that would be something... like that. That will be T1 in the y direction. And something like this would be T2 in the y direction. Now in the x direction I'll have T1x And in the negative x direction, I'll have t2x. You notice that uh, for our equilibrium, we're going to have all the x component equal to 0 and all the y components equal to 0. So in the x direction, I'll have to have t1x in the positive x hat direction plus t2x in the negative x hat direction equal to 0. And so then I have that t1x has to be equal to t2x. I'm not quite ready to find the magnitude just yet uh, because I will need uh, to know what T2 would be. But I can put it in terms of T2. Um, if you notice, the X component is the adjacent side to the angle that we're given, in this case, 63. So T2X would be T2 times cosine of 63 degrees. And T1x uh, would be T1 times cosine 41 degrees. For now, that's as far as I can get on my x components. Now, analyzing the y components, I have that the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be equal to 0. So the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be equal to zero again because the system is static. Now in the y direction, I have uh, the following forces. I have T3 that's pulling down on this junction and T1y and T2y that are pulling up on that junction. So I have T1 y y hat plus t 2 y y hat minus t 3 in the y hat direction. All of tension 3 is in the y direction. So that's how they input t 1 y or t 2 y or 
that's why I put T1Y and T2Y and for T3 I, did, I just put T3 because again all of it is in the Y direction um, and that has to be equal to zero uh, using the same geometric arguments I can see that T1Y and T2Y are proportional to the sine of the angle so I'm gonna have T1Y equals to T1 sine of 41 plus T2 sine of 63 minus T3 is equal to 0 and again I know what T3 is so this uh, helps me so I have that T1 sine of 41 plus T2 sine of 63 has to be equal to 200 okay now I put uh, the equations uh, together um, I can find a relationship I will copy down what we had before So with these two equations I can solve my system because I have two equations and two unknowns. My unknowns are T1 and T2 and my equations are equation 1 that I derive from the Y components and my equation 2 that I derive from the X components. I will make a little bit more room to work. Okay, so um, let's use equation 2 to find the relationship between T1 and T2. Uh, so from equation 2 I can say T1 is equal to T2 cosine of 63 over cosine of 41. Now if I put that in the calculator... cosine of 63 that's equal to 0.4539 and then I divide that by the cosine of 41 and I get that that's this ratio is approximately 0.602 And so now I substitute this for every T1 in equation 1. And so then I will have one equation with one unknown. So instead of writing T1, I'm going to write that. Now this is great because I can just factor out my T2 
this entire quantity is just a number, which I will compute now. Uh, 0.602 times sine of 41, I get 0 0.394, 0 0.395, something like that. And then to that I'm going to add the sine of 63. And that becomes 1.286. So T2 times 1.286 is equal to 200. From which follows, then that T2 is going to be 200 divided by that number. Which is 155.56. And using this relationship again, I can find T1. Because T1 is going to be T2 times 0.602. which is 93.65. Okay, and that is problem 26.